All over this land, rows and rows of we stand, just waiting to be cut down, down, down. down. Brackled and rosa, brackled and glows all over this land, all over this land. Cyrus McCormick grew up on a farm in Virginia. His goal was to earn a million dollars. In 1833, that was a lot of money. The average worker only earned a nickel an hour. 26 years later, he had earned a million dollars. He had also changed the way people farmed with his wheat harvester called the Reaper. Cyrus and his wife were very generous, sharing their money with people who needed help. All over this land, rows and rows of we stand, just waiting to be cut down, down, down. Brackled and rows of brackled and glows all over this land, all over this land. He invented the reaper when he was only 22 years old. His father had tried for 15 years to invent a harvester, but had not been able to build one successfully. He had made a lot of mistakes, but young Cyrus learned from his father's mistakes. If a strand of wheat got tangled in the machine, he would get down on his hands and knees to look until he found out exactly what had tangled. He asked his father if he could take over working on the invention. His father gave him permission, but thought it was hopeless. All over this land, rows and rows of we stand, just waiting to be cut down, down, down. Brackled and rows of brackled and glows all over this land, all over this land. In just two months, he was able to make a harvester. Some say it looked like a combination of a flying machine, a wheelbarrow, and a carriage. When he tested it, he could harvest an acre an hour. Remember, the old by hand speed was one to three acres a day. All over this land, rows and rows of we stand, just waiting to be cut down, down, down. down. Brackled and rows of brackled and glows all over this land, all over this land. Cyrus decided he would get some of the successful farmers to test his reaper. Maybe they would talk to the other farmers into buying a reaper of their own. He could just not interest them, so he decided to work on it some more so it would work even better. He put a blade on it which would chop the wheat off cleanly. In 1843, another man, who was also making a reaper, challenged him to a contest. They would see who could cut the most wheat. On the day of the contest, it rained. The other man's reaper jammed and wouldn't cut, but McCormick had designed his to cut in damp weather. All over this land, rows and rows of we stand, just waiting to be cut down, down, down. Brackled and rows of brackled and glows all over this land, all over this land. That year, he sold 29 reapers, and each year after that, he sold more and more. By 1850, he was selling 5,000 reapers a year. His company became the International Harvester Company in 1902. At the time of his death in 1884, enough grain was shipped from Chicago to bake 10 billion loaves of bread a year, thanks to McCormick's invention. All over this land, rows and rows of we stand, just waiting to be cut down, down, down. Brackled and rows of brackled and glows all over this land, all over this land.